Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's have this problem on two-way load distribution. The concrete floor on this plan has a thickness 150 mm and superimposed dead and live loads of 2.4 kilopascals and 4.5 kilopascals respectively. Determine the unfactored maximum moment in an A interior concrete beam 400 mm by 600 mm in cross section and B, interior concrete girder for 50 mm by 750 mm in cross-section, and C, axial load in column E. The length L is 5 meters and S is 3 meters. Assume simple support connections. The specific weight of concrete is 23.6 kN per cubic meter. So here is the given figure. So this is two-way distribution because the ratio L which is 5 divided by 3 is less than 2 5 thirds or 1.667 less than 2 so that's two way distribution the pressure is 2.4 kilopascals superimposed dead load plus 4.5 kilopascals superimposed live load then plus the uniform weight of the slab which is specific weight times thickness of the slab when 15. So the uniform pressure on the floor is equal to 10.44 kilopascals. Then the tributary area of the interior beam would look like this, trapezoid. And for the interior girder, we have three triangular load plus the reaction at the end of the interior beams then times two because we have at this interior girder we have two interior uh, beams so the trapezoidal loading so let's have the weight which is pressure times s in this case s because this is s over two then plus s over two so that's s 10.44 times three that's 31.32 kilonewtons per meter then the weight of the beam is 23.6 times cross-sectional area of the beam, which is 0.45 by 0 0.75, 0 0.4 times 0.6 rather for the beam. So it is equal to 5.664 kilonewtons per meter. Let's now draw the loading diagram of the interior beam and let's compute the reaction at the ends of the interior beam. So we have the trapezoidal loading, which is the intensity of the load, 31.32 kilonewtons per meter. That's 1.5 S over 2, S over 2, so 1.5, 1.5. The length of the beam is 5, therefore this is 2 meters, 5 minus 3, or 2 times 5 minus 2 times 1.5. We will call the reaction at the ends as RIB as shown. Then two, summation versus y, 2 times rib is equal to area of the trapezoid, 1 half of 2 plus 5 times 31.32 the height, plus 5 meters times 5.664 for this weight of beam. So rib therefore is equal to 68.97 kilonewtons. The maximum moment in an interior beam is at the center of the beam. So therefore we sum up moments about the center we imagine a section here then consider all forces to the left so maximum moment is rib times 2.5 where 2.5 is half of 5 then minus the moment of this triangular load the moment is force which is area of the triangle times moment arm one third of 1.5 is 0.5 plus 1 half of 2 is 1. 
So 1.5, the moment arm. The area is 1 half of 1.5 times 31.32. And the moment arm is 1.5. Then minus the moment of this rectangular loading, this one, which is 1 meter by 31.32, the moment arm is 0.5. So minus 1 times 31.32 times 0.5, then minus the moment of this rectangular uniform weight of the beam. The length is 2.5, the height is 5.664, the moment arm is half of 2.5, 1.25. So minus 2.5 times 5.664 times 1.25. So from there, we can now compute the maximum moment in an interior beam, which is equal to 103.8 kilonewton meter. Now for the other uh, approach, which is we convert the equivalent loading as shown, and we'll call that WE. WE is equal to formula pressure times S, over 6, quantity 3, minus S over L, quantity square. So maximum moment is the total uniform load of a simply supported beam, which is WE plus weight of beam rectangular loading, L square over 8. That's the maximum moment at the center of a beam, which is simply supported beam, which is loaded with uniform load. And the total uniform load is this the uniform weight equivalent plus uniform load equivalent plus weight of the beam. So WE is PS over 6 quantity 3 minus S over L quantity square times 2 because it is an interior beam. This 2 here, 2 sides. Substitute Pressure 10.44 S3 over 6 quantity 3 minus 3 over 5 quantity square times 2. So it is equal to 27.562 kilonewtons per meter. Substitute into this formula, M max in an interior beam is equal to 27.562 plus 5.664 times 5 square over 8. And we'll get the same answer, 103.8 kilonewton meter. Then for an interior beam, we have three triangles with the intensity, because this is an interior girder, intensity is the same, 31.32. And we have reaction concentrated loads at these joints, at this junction, which is two times reaction at the end of the beam. 68.97 because we have here an interior beam attached to that interior girder and another interior beam attached to that interior girder. Same is true in this side. So this is weight of girder 23.6 cross-sectional area of girder 0.45 times 0.75. So the weight of uniform weight of girder is 7.965 kilonewtons per meter. So we now draw the load diagram of the interior girder. So these are the three triangles with intensity 31.32 and at this joint or junctions here we have two times reaction in an interior beam. And therefore we'll call the reaction at the ends of the interior girder as REB, REG, RIG, sorry. Reaction in an interior girder. So summation forces Y two times RIG is equal to 3 times 1 half of 3 times 31.32 for these three triangles here, plus 4 times because 2 plus 2 is 4 of 68.27, then plus area of the, the weight of the girder, which is 9 meters long, times 7.965. So RIG is equal to 244.25 kilonewtons. Then on the next slide, we copy this, then take note RIG 244.25 and RIB is 68.97. So this is it, and this is the plan RIB 68.97 kilonewtons. This is the original plan. 
So we now compute the maximum moment in an iterator girder by summing up moments or taking moments about the center. So RIG times 4.5, half of 9 is 4.5, Mmax iterator girder 244.25 times 4.5 then minus the moment of this triangle, which is the area is one half of three times 31.32. The moment arm is 1.5 plus 1.5, so three. So this is 1.5. This is the centroid of the triangle. 1.5 plus 1.5 is three. Minus the moment of this concentrated load, two times 68.97. The moment arm is 1.5. 2 times 68.97, 1.5, minus the moment of this triangular load about the center, which is 1 half of 1.5 times 31.32. The moment arm is 1 third of 1.5, so 0.5. So minus 1 half of 1.5 times 31.32, 0.5 moment arm. Minus the moment of this rectangle, the length is 4.5, the height is 7.965, and the moment arm is half of 4.5, which is 2.25. So minus 4.5 times 7.965 times 2.25. Again, 2.25 is half of 4.5. Computing maximum moment in an interrogator is equal to 658.9 kilonewton meter. Now we cannot present another solution because this is a different loading situation here. We cannot compute the equivalent loading of this triangular load and apply the formula because of these concentrated loads here. So that's the moment about the center, maximum moment in an interior girder. Finally, for the axial load on this column E here, since we have two exterior girders attached to it so let's analyze the loading of the exterior girder and the reaction at the end of the exterior girder so for the exterior girder since the tributary area will just be half of the triangle the intensity here is equal to half of 31.32 because this is just uh, pressure times S over 2. The height is S over 2, so pressure 10.44 times S 3 over 2. Or it is half the intensity of the loading of the interior girder, so 15.66. And the end reaction here is only 1 because this is an exterior girder. End reaction vertical reaction of an interior girder 68.27 only so the weight of the girder 7.965 summation forces y 2 times reg exterior girder is equal to there are three triangles 3 times 1 half of 3 times 15.66 then 268.97 then 9 meters by 7.965 9 times 7.965 so reg is equal to for 140.05 kilonewtons let's now analyze this column e here then at the upper part it is the end reaction of the in exterior girder which is 140.05 at the left is the end reaction of an interior beam which is equal to 68.97. Then we have here 140.05, 140.05 here in the reaction of an exterior girder. Therefore, the axial load of column E is 68.97 plus 2 times 140.05. So P sub E is 349.1 kilonewtons. Another solution is using the tributary area of column E or tributary area of the floor to be transmitted to column E as shown. So the dimension will be L over 2 by 3S, S over 2 plus 2S plus S over 2, 3S. So L over 2, then this is 3S. 
So P sub E is equal to pressure, uniform pressure times the area, the entire area, which is L over 2 times 3S. So pressure times L over 2 times 3S. There are three beams inside this tributary area to be transmitted to E, the weight. So weight of beam times three times the length L over two. So plus weight of beam times three times the length of the beam L over two. Then we have girder, weight of girder, the length of the girder is 3s. So plus weight of girder times length of girder 3s. Substitute P sub e is 10.44 times 5 over 2 times 3 times 3 plus weight of beam 5.664 times 3 times 5 over 2 plus weight of girder 7.965 and the length of girder is 3s or 3 times 3 or 9. So computing the axial load in column E by another approach is the same, 349.1 kilonewtons. So that's it for this problem. I hope that you were able to follow the solutions, the explanations.